I, I'm often uh, asked, why do you do these things? And uh, why do you do art? And I'm compelled, and, and I feel I'm compelled to do the art since I was very, very, very young. And there is just a beauty. The first time you touch um, a canvas, a paper, a board, there is a, there is a kind of tactile. One, one can start to wonder, where does the passion for art begin? And um, what compels a person to do art? And to do it in this kind of methodical way? And what are the benefits and, and why? And the first thing that one thinks about is when you touch a board or a canvas or a paper, there is a tactile dimension to it that begs the question. The best way to say it is begs the question. Once you're an artist, once you're an artist, you know because once you touch the paper or you have this surface, you, you immediately see the surface is blank. But you, you think of, this must be filled. This wants to say something. It's begging a question. And the artist is the one that fits the proverbial answer of the space, within the space. As Matisse said, I define space through color. The lines can be thin or thick. For example, this one here, I had a theme for a cigar company, um, cigars. And as I made the initial foray into the painting, I made broad strokes with a type of dark uh, ink, if you will, um, a dark, uh, almost type of block print ink that the Japanese would use when they do block printing. And notice the broad strokes, the thick lines, and the red, how it interplays with the red. And what emerged was these lips and, and how the tobacco is held when they're lighting it how it leans against the bottom lip as you're igniting it with the cigarette. But you don't, with the cigarette lighter, but you don't see the cigarette lighter. You just see the muscle of the lip holding the cigar as it's clenching at the light. And then you follow the nose pattern and you get a little bit of the eye because what you're doing is you're focusing. You've already defined the space with your lines and you know exactly where the harmony of the smoke coming up the muscle pull, the cheek, and the reinforcing lines of the eye, and also the neck area that gives, all these lines have almost a harmonious interplay, a juxtapositioning. Anyway, in a layman's term, you are fulfilling the space and you have resolved the space. So to the artist, when the work is done, you start to see that the space is no longer as it was blank, but you have taken this little square and you have resolved an issue of space, color, dimension. Now, here's the fun part, like a musician. Once this is down, the proverbial customer of the art or the collector or the fan understands the artist because this now comes into the receptor's eye, the person who loves art, who knows art, and he sees immediately what, the, what was delivered to the artist. Yeah, the same image consciousness, the same definition of space and juxtapose is absorbed by the person who loves art and says, for, it, it perceives a relevance. He says, this is amazing for that little space. Who would have thought to put the lip that way? And, and it can almost pick up where the artist's mind and his inspiration came from. So now it's like a musician that reads notes from the composer. The collector of the art knows that this is a masterpiece. It doesn't matter how big or how small. And he sees that this is something that fulfilled that question of that space like nothing else could at that moment. And it becomes uh, a piece like Edward, uh, like uh, Munch, the screen. Everybody knows the man holding his head and screaming with the mouth open. And he, he felt that that would resonate in that space, that mood at that time. And the world since has remembered that painting, the screen. And I'm sure someday the world will remember a painting like this, 
with the tobacco and the mouth and that little area because it becomes destiny. So these arts, um, as I say, the artist is compelled to do many of them. And after a while, you start to notice how comfortable the artist is with line. After you've done thousands of them, like I have, since uh, I was four years old, you start to have an affinity for line and the communion between the medium, the art, the board, the, the space, the color, all these things start to become relevant once the act is initiated of drawing. And everything is the line, this subtle interplay, like graphic arts of the thin line with the thick line and the colors. And, and yet it still has a dominion of its own, even though the artist starts to lay them down. The picture, as I said, begs the question and also shapes the destiny of the image. So as we see here, um, I wanted to do for a client a tobacco smoking. This is just because I have these today. And um, uh, I myself have stopped smoking tobaccos, <laughs> but there is a beauty to the, the moment of the smoker with the cigar and it's a uh, smoke shop. And it's the thing that first came to me is the Cuban cigar, which is one of the best cigars in the world. So I put Cuba here and I put smoke, fuma, which is the Spanish word for smoke and smoke it. But anyway, look at the man's face, the mustache. He looks a little bit like Samuel Clemens. He's clenching the cigar in the teeth. He's wearing the beautiful tie. He has the Creole look of Cuba. And this is just a beautiful painting. And I think people should all buy these paintings because they are works of art collectors and they increase in value. Art does not um, lose value as real estate or funds but art increases in value. And this is something that was done by a man, not a machine, and something that will only resist time and, and become loving in time, and will, and will uh, give a glow to your home and a story and a time and, and the artist's loving hand. Okay, so basically I'm gonna conclude this uh, episode by saying look at these beautiful things. Um, the best way I can describe it is each one has a life of its own. It's like little puppies in a litter. These things become my children. So when an artist makes a painting for you, and when you have a painting, you're very fortunate because you're getting something that he created. It's almost like a child, and he's entrusting it to you. And of course there's money interacted, what have you, or barter, but these things are something that the artist made with his hands, and like his children. Look how beautiful. They, they tend to have a loving nature, and when they hang in your home, they are a beautiful, they are beautiful work when they hang in your home. Picture them in a set. Look at this beautiful set of these red and, and black lines. Look at the eyes and the mouth and the wording. This was for a Cuban cigar company. Look how beautiful here. Imagine these things hanging with a big frame. Uh, try to call me by the art and remember out there if there's any museums, this is a real outsider artist. You read about them in the books, I'm here now. I want you people out there that are museum owners, patrons, to contact me because you're witnessing history. I knew Andy Warhol, I knew Basquiat, I knew Keith Haring who was amazing. And so was Andy, he was an amazing gentleman. And Basquiat, what more do I need to say? He was a master. So now you're seeing me and help the arts. We must help the artists in our community. These are the people that introduce you to higher planes of existence. And like I said, these pictures will speak to you. They tran you transcend to higher levels with art. It's the highest ideal of man.